Welcome, No DQ Galaxy, to another edition of the No DQ Review. And as you can notice, there's a couple things missing here. Jeff Meacham and my beard. But do not worry, Jeff is under the weather. We almost didn't have Greg because he's under the weather too, but I don't think quite as bad as Jeff. So how's everybody doing? I'm going to start with you, Mr. Cherry, PA Sensation. How is it going? Not too bad. I woke up with a little bit of congestion. Uh, thankfully, WrestleMania week's over, so I can get some friggin' sleep. Um, but still here, still, still this, still the two-time champ. I'm sure until we start season four, and then Aaron's gonna throw the friggin' gauntlet at me. But it, it's okay. I'm here. I'm a little sick, so if you see me blowing my nose, I got a stack of tissues right here. But I'm here. That's what matters. Good man. Good man, Mr. Rift. How's it going? How's it going on this somber Rusev day today? Yes, very somber Rusev day indeed, and I'm sure we'll be talking about that here in a few minutes. I am doing great. It's been a very busy week with WrestleMania. I know, Virtue, you had a very busy week going all over the place in New Orleans. It's been busy here covering all the shows and doing all the live videos. It's been a hectic week. Things are slowing down a little bit, but still, it's been a really busy week, and we have more to come. We have the Superstar Shake-Up. We have the greatest Royal Rumble. We have Backlash. No shortage of topics today to cover. That's right. And also joining us, TJS. Did I get that right? That's correct. Chat sir. moderator for NoDQ.com. How's it going, man? It's uh, it's going well. Um, I'm uh, a little bit worried about Rusev. And uh, like you said, it's a quite somber Rusev day today. So, uh, you know, uh, other than that, I'm, I'm great. Well, I'm sure as we go down my list, uh, no pun intended right there, we will be talking about that situation. But first, I want to rewind because I was in New Orleans this past weekend, and I went to Access, Ring of Honor, watched NXT on the WWE Network, then, of course, Mania, Raw, and SmackDown. Let's start with NXT. I watched it. I gave it an A, obviously. Probably everybody gave it an A. I thought it was a little bit better than Ring of Honor. The Ring of Honor Supercard show, my problem was being there, it was their biggest attendance, I think, of all time. It was five and a half hours from pre-show to the end of the last match. It was like WrestleMania long. And to me, that kind of deflated the crowd, as we know how it does for Mania, for a couple of the matches. Um, I did enjoy Kenny Omega and Cody. As always, Cody's a great heel. He's a really good heel. And it's, it's a shame WWE didn't utilize that properly. And, you know, I, some people, I won't mention their name, said Cody failed in WWE with multiple gimmicks. He's one of those guys I think WWE failed him. Uh, also, of course, there was a ladder match at Ring of Honor with the Young Bucks, and I believe they had Flip Gordon. I really like that guy. I could see him in NXT one day versus SoCal Uncensored. Very, very good match. Probably the best one on the card. Let's flip to NXT. They had a ladder match. And then they also had Ciampa versus Gargano. Now, I'm interested in all of your thoughts since you watched NXT. What did you like out of those two matches better? And I don't know if anybody caught any of the stuff on YouTube or whatever for Ring of Honor. But if you did, let me know. I'll start with you, TJS. What was the best match, in your opinion, on NXT? And how close was it to the second best match? Well, you know, um, I've got to go with, uh, it's going to sound mainstream here, but Gargano versus Champa was just, it was incredible from start to finish because I felt like those guys actually hated each other and the build was just tremendous. You had Gargano going to Champa's house, you had, you know, you had Gargano getting fired and trying to get back into the NXT arena, the fans were behind him, and Champa is just such a great heel. Coming out to no music was genius. He executed that way better than Dolph Ziggler could ever dream of. And, you know, the crowd was just, it was so, they were using so much profanity, and he gets real heat. It's so hard for heels to get actual heat these days. And Champa, he's like a heat magnet. It's incredible. I've never seen anyone get booed that bad since maybe like the night after WrestleMania 32 or 33 when uh, Undertaker lost to Roman Reigns. And it just reminded me of John Cena uh, at One Night Stand in 2006. It was insane. And the thing is, Cena was a babyface when he was getting booed. Champa's a heel, and he's going against the most overface in NXT in Gargano. And it was just an excellent match. I love the callbacks, you know, uh, towards the end when there was the, the sitting thing. 
Gargano uh, gave his friend like one last chance, kind of like in the Cruiserweight Classic when they had the match, and Gargano was beaten senseless, and Champa just couldn't finish him. It was just awesome from start to finish. I thought that um, it being unsanctioned really helped it, but I think it would have been just as good if it wasn't, and it was just like a technical showcase. Um, and for the second match, of course, I'm going to say the ladder match. Uh, I thought it was great. Uh, there were a lot of awesome spots, you know, the the two ladders being broken. Ricochet was on, uh, and there was even some good storytelling in it uh, with Dane and Sullivan uh, having, like, a competition to see who could outdo one another. They were throwing Ricochet back and forth. It was just a solid match, and in my opinion, those were the two five-star matches of the weekend. So, <clears throat> just, it was awesome. You know, and speaking of five... I believe there's five matches on NXT. And unlike WrestleMania, where I think I only got four or five right out of the 14, I did get all five predictions right for NXT, which is the first time ever. Everybody knows I barely get half of them right in NXT. <laughs> so, Greg, what are your thoughts on those two matches? Obviously, I want to make those the focal point. And did you catch any Ring of Honor clips? Um, I did not catch any Ring of Honor clips. It's been a busy week in the Cherry House. Um but I did get to watch NXT. Um, I only got to see part of it live, and then I had to leave the house for something. And then I came back Sunday before WrestleMania and watched NXT. So I had pretty much a wrestling marathon from 2 o'clock Eastern till midnight. Um, that being said, I love the ladder match, and I, I love Ciampa and, or, uh, Ciampa and Gargano. Uh, the NXT title match also with Aleister Black and Andrade Cien Almas was great. Um the only match I was a little bit down on, and it wasn't even because it was bad. It was just the finish was booked similarly to Asuka and Bailey. was the women's title match between uh, Shayna Baszler and Ember Moon. That match was still good, um, and, and we can't forget the tag match. I mean, I have to mention every match because they were so good. Um, and also, Virtue, I know you're not a Mauro Ronaldo guy, but if you've seen that clip that's been circulating around Twitter, the last day or so of him really getting into the commentary. I mean, it, it's why I enjoy Mauro Ronaldo's commentary. I it's saw it. The passion that he has, the excitement, and it's not just in his voice. I mean, you saw it. It was like physically he's standing up. He's like really getting into it. And, and Mauro Ronaldo just adds something special to the NXT brand. Um, so, fantastic show. I'm going to have, have to go with the ladder match over Ch uh, Champa and Gargano, though. Ooh. Great. Interesting pick there. And, and, re and referring to uh, Ronaldo, I don't hate him. And after I saw how he perceived that that spot in the gargano Champa match, his whole performance is a commentator. And what we get week in and week out on Raw and SmackDown, I no longer hate the guy. You know, And, I, again, I used to hate John Cena, too, and I no longer hate him. See, being a more, you know, an, from an analytical point of view – you have to look at it from a fan's perspective and from behind the curtains perspective. So, Greg, I do not hate Ronaldo any longer, so I'm, that's a building process. Just bear with me. It might take me some time. Aaron, what are your thoughts? I personally thought my favorite match of the weekend, and I'm biased because I was there. It's different when you're there. It was Omega and Cody because I got to see Omega live. With that said, all of those matches that I talked about, I, I gave five stars. <clears throat> Virtue Elzer gave him five stars. So it's hard to pick one. What are your thoughts? It's definitely tough to pick, and I really don't have that much else to add to what has already been said and what I've said on No DQ Live. Uh, Tyler, first of all, you did a tremendous job with your analysis of that match. Very well done. You're a regular yeah, here. You're, you're a natural. You, you do great stuff. <laughs> I, I appreciate you being on. Um, do a Barry yeah. Horowitz. Pat yourself on the back. Yes, definitely. Right there. And uh, Greg, you, you hit it right on the nail, right about Mar Ronaldo. That guy is awesome. I think he's the best announcer in WWE. Anybody who hasn't seen that clip should definitely check that out. As far as I'm concerned, he's the guy right now. And Corey Graves should not have won announcer of the year last year. That's just my take on it. And I feel Mar Ronaldo should be winning it this year. As far as which match I go with, I give the slight edge to Gargano and Ciampa, but it's really close for me. They're both excellent matches. Both of them are worthy of being match of the year contenders. And this has been a really great year for WWE matches so far because NXT TakeOver Royal Rumble weekend had a really solid match between Gargano and Andrade Cien Almas. 
Um, so yeah, it, it, it's really tough to say, but I would give the slight edge to Gargano and Ciampa. Now, before I move to WrestleMania, NXT has the perfect formula. I, you know, granted, old pay-per-views back in the day started at 8. They would end at like 10.45. They were under three hours. Some of them had six or seven matches. Most of them had that many. This is what they need to do. But again, now that we're going to be joint, you know, having both brands doing pay-per-views, I fear they're going to stay long, at least for the main pay-per-views, if not get longer. So kudos to NXT. That's why you get the A, slight edge over Ring of Honor. And using those grades going to WrestleMania, we're going in the opposite direction. Now, me being there for my first WrestleMania, I can't grade that. It was an experience. It was great. Just, just the vibe, the electricity looking at all this, the setup, the stage, the lights, the, the interacting with fans. But watching it back, I clearly, I could see how it was about a C or C show on average. It, it just, maybe it was the booking. Um, we all thought Roman was going to win. And, and it's now, now it's like fans are disappointed for getting that match wrong because we thought for sure that we knew. Craig, I want to start with you. There's a lot of things I want to talk about like key points from Mania. You know, we could say kudos to the Woken Warriors with Bray and Matt forming that. I'm glad I saw that. Let's just skip the pre-show. We're going to go right to Ronda Rousey, Kurt Angle versus Triple H and Stephanie. I was there. Everybody stood up about a minute into the match and stood up the entire time. Greg, how did it come across to you watching it on TV? You know, I don't remember which video it was that we discussed this match and people were like, oh, Ronda Rousey doesn't deserve this spot. Ronda Rousey is going to be terrible in the ring. And I believe I was the one who said, you know, let's give her a chance. We don't know what she can do. And holy crap, did she exceed expectations. She was fantastic in this match. I was a little nervous more so than she was working with Stephanie. But Stephanie bumped the crap off for Ronda Rousey. She was fantastic. All, all four of them were great in this match, and the match came across as the best one of the night for WrestleMania, uh, for me personally. I don't know about anybody else's opinion, but I think that match was easily a match of the night. So props to Ronda, Stephanie, Triple H, Kurt Angle, all four of them, not disappointing at all. And I, I did pop a little bit when I saw Stephanie doing the Triple H uh, water entrance. That was pretty cool, too. Good take, and to me, it was the match of the night being there in attendance. Aaron, what do you think? I totally agree. For me, that was the WrestleMania match, and I think 20, 25, 30 years from now, when we look back at great WrestleMania moments, that one will stand the test of time. That'll be a match that we remember for many years to come, and I think as far as celebrity appearances at WrestleMania go, I think Ronda Rousey had one of the best performances of any celebrity to show up in a WrestleMania match. I mean, name a better one. I really don't know if there is one. She had one of the best I mean, celebrity appearances. Yep. I, I, I felt like Piper was watching over her. It's just weird as that sounds. I, I really did, being being there. So any other thoughts on that? I'll pass it to TJS, Aaron. I mean, I thought Ronda was hot. Yeah, she was. And I think that WrestleMania had some good moments, some not so good moments. For me, it was a very mixed bag average show when you put it all together i did like the opening match the intercontinental title triple threat with seth rollins winning the title i thought that that was a really strong opening match maybe not as great as brett versus owen i wouldn't go that far but i still think it was really solid as an opening match for wrestlemania and of course charlotte and oscar was a good match shocking ending very mixed opinions on that one some people love it some people hate it um, but definitely people are talking about it. So, TJS, your thoughts over on WrestleMania, the good points, the bad points? Well, um, I agree with you guys completely about the mixed tag team match and the match of the night. I mean, all four people in that match looked like a million bucks. You had Kurt Angle coming out with the singlet. Finally, he had the singlet and not like the Power Ranger gear or whatever he had before. The pyro. The entrances, everything just felt so special. And it felt like a genuine fight to me because they were hardly like, I couldn't tell who was legal most of the time because it felt like they were all just brawling and the referee was giving it leadway, which I just thought was awesome. And, um, you know, um, you had Triple H face off with Ronda Rousey, and uh, Ronda Rousey even throws better punches than Shane McMahon. It's incredible. <laughs> I just I thought it was spectacular from start to finish, and I can't believe how well Ronda is doing. 
Uh, I, I'll admit, I was doubting it at first. I was worried that she was just, you know, maybe washed up or whatever from UFC. But no, I mean, she is dedicated. You can tell that she trained hard for this match. And you can tell that really all four people just busted their ass in it. I thought it was great. And um, are we just are we talking about all of WrestleMania right now, just the highs and the lows? Yeah, highs and lows. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, well, unfortunately, like the lowest point of WrestleMania was probably the Raw Tag Team Championship match for me uh, with Nicholas and Braun. Sure. Was it funny? Yeah. Was it entertaining? Sure. But at the end of the day, you're making the bar... A, a very successful tag team. They ended the New Day's record, and they've just been dominant on Raw ever since. And you make them lose to Braun Strowman and a 10-year-old kid. It was a joke. Because now, Nicholas is actually holding the record for youngest champion. WWE published an article about the 10 youngest champions in history. Nicholas was number one. No one's ever going to beat that. No one's ever going to be younger than 10, unless next year they do something even crazier. I just thought it was a joke. And it was even a short match. It was in the death spot. I just, yeah, delete it. Delete it. I didn't like it at all. Now, I, Tyler, I just, yeah. Braun Strowman's dad was in attendance. I actually bumped into him at a hotel, and he looked just like him, and I talked to him for a couple minutes. Why couldn't they have done that, even if it was going to be somebody standing on the apron? Anything, <laughs> you know what I mean? Anything but that. Yeah, make it the damn referee or something. Come on. Yeah. Uh, I just. I think Greg. I don't know if Greg, you were trying to say something. Yeah, he did have his hand up. Yeah, well, Greg, what I was you? thinking. I was thinking you were going to refer to Matt's son, Maxwell, was possibly going to be. That, that's actually what I was going for. I, I was actually thinking, hey, why not have Matt Hardy and King Maxwell become the tag team champions? There you go. And then you'll have the youngest champion be like three years older, however old he <laughs> is. It'd be like, oh, well, uh, unless you put a newborn on, <laughs> on top of them, is, then you probably won't beat it. But I mean. <sighs> It's what it is, what they say here. Well, you know, there's still more I want to talk about, and, and TJS, will, you'll have another opportunity here. Uh, so Jinder Mahal is the U.S. champ. So I guess now, from what we know now, we can see why. All right? So we'll, we'll go. I want to bring a couple things up, then we'll go around the horn again. So, of course, Asuka tapped. I guess they wanted to build Charlotte, but here's my problem. They did that only to have Carmella cash in on SmackDown. That was my big problem with that. If you're going to build Charlotte up as the – the, the number one woman, I think they should have waited on Carmella or did that a different way or made her go to Raw and cash it in. Cena and The Undertaker. So it was a great spot for Elias. We didn't get Jeff Jarrett other than the Hall of Fame walking out for that. And by the way, that pyro that popped, it was right in front of Jeff. I think I saw him jump a little bit. I, I jumped when they blew those pyros up. And then, of course, Elias had a big spot. You know, The Rock didn't come out, but it still was during this Undertaker Cena gimmick. I thought it was funny how they played that off where the ref came out and told Cena something and he raced. And I thought we were going to get something big, just like I wrote about. And we ended up getting a squash match. I'm interested. Obviously, people know from my Periscopes, my Twitter, me doing this. I don't even need to explain myself on my thoughts on that. Aaron, I'll start with you. Um, gender... Oscar tapping and the whole taker Cena segment. Go ahead. Okay, well, Jinder winning the title is like, <laughs> meh. Not really happy about that, yeah. But it would is you, what it is. Who would you rather had Orton keep it like you predicted? Rusev. It's Rusev Day. Uh, Rusev knowing knowing now Rusev what we know, Day. they would have never have done that out of the other two guys. Who would you have had? Because they, they weren't going to give it to Rusev. They don't like Rusev Day. If not Rusev, then Orton. I would have had Orton just retain the title. And they're doing Orn versus Mahal at Backlash. That is a piss break match if there ever was one. Did anybody? It was a last year's Backlash. I know. Did anybody? Does anybody out there have any interest in seeing that match again? I don't think there's they're one. They're gonna have to start the show with that match. <laughs> oh my god! on the kickoff. Yes. Throw it on the kickoff. Let Randy Orton be on the kickoff. So, I, okay, we know your stance on gender. We've known it for a long time. Um, what about Asuka tapping and the way they did the money in the bank cash in it? Well, it was Smack very shocking. I wasn't expecting it. I don't know what it means for Asuka. We'll have to wait and see how she uh, is portrayed in the coming weeks after this whole superstar shakeup. As far as Carmella winning, I was fine with it, how it played out on SmackDown. I mean, Charlotte was beaten up pretty badly by the iconic, iconics, I was going to say iconic duo, but they're no longer the iconic duo, 
Um, I thought that that was well done, but I, I would have liked what we've talked about before, the idea of Carmella swerving everybody and cashing in on the Raw Women's Champion. I think that that would have been a better idea. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, hopefully Asuka is able to overcome this, though. You know, I feel like this could potentially hurt her momentum, and will she be able to be taken as seriously now that she doesn't have the streak behind her? That's the big question. And Undertaker and Cena, um, I thought it was fine. I think at this stage of the game, Undertaker and Cena probably would not have been able to live up to people's expectations, which is why I think it was okay to just do what they did, do a short squash match. I mean, that's what people wanted to see. People wanted to see Cena get his ass kicked, and that's what happened. So I, I think it was okay. TJS, your thoughts? Well, uh, as far as gender winning the championship goes, I think it's the traditional foreign guy has the United States championship. He's going to bash the United States. Blah, 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 blah. And I just don't know who Rusev pissed off. I, I don't get it. Uh, Virtue, you were there. Was the entire stadium not chanting Rusev Day? No, they, they were chanting it. Um, it, it again, it, it wasn't an open-door stadium, but it's it's not as yeah. impactful as being in a smaller arena. But, yes, I mean, there's no doubt. I picked Rusev Day to go over, and WWE just clearly does not want that for the fans. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand. Um, I would have rather have anybody but gender. I would have taken Orton over gender. I don't like Orton either. I think he needs to evolve his character. Uh, so about that match, whatever. It just felt like a SmackDown match. And if Rusev wasn't in that match, I think it would have been a piss break match. Um, now, John Cena versus Undertaker, is that what's next? Or is it... Uh, yeah, and, and I want to tell you guys, the aura in the stadium was electric because of the way the Undertaker's entrance is. So that part of it was special. Obviously, the two minute and 45 second or whatever it was, squash was kind of like, okay, but so it, it, I mean, I'm not saying I was like totally disappointed with it. It, it played off well as a segment. To me, it wasn't a match. I think that the uh, John Cena versus Undertaker thing was awesome. If you look at the story of it, you had John Cena thinking that he could call out the phenom, the dead man, this monster that's been dominating for over 20 years. You know, he's been talking about John or uh, Undertaker's a broken down old man, this and that. And he said he was going to go to WrestleMania as a fan. Well, you know, he saw The Undertaker's entrance. He wasn't prepared. He was expecting to make like an ass out of Undertaker. Undertaker squashed him. And I thought that was awesome because it caught John Cena off guard. John Cena can take this loss. Undertaker needed the win because if this is his last match, he's going to go out strong on top. And I just think it was great. Uh, and as far as Oscar and Charlotte goes, um, I would have done it things a little bit differently. Maybe had the match go, uh, have a long, long match. Yep. 35 minutes, maybe. Make it great. Uh, not that it wasn't great, it was. But I just feel like Charlotte has nothing to gain from ending this streak. Um, what was the point? Uh, because since Carmella's cashed in, sh like, what if Charlotte comes an afterthought now? Because if Charlotte takes the title off Carmella, then the cash-in would have seemed pointless. So, I think that uh, Oscar should have beaten Charlotte. And then I think Carmella should have cashed in on Asuka after this grueling 35-minute match. And you have uh, Carmella and Asuka's undefeated streak and win the women's championship all in one swift motion. And that makes Carmella look great. You know, she gets the rub from uh, ending the streak, and she gets a big WrestleMania moment. Yeah. So uh, that's what I would have yep. done. That would have pissed Good off points. the internet pretty yep. damn badly. I think they would have been outraged. Heel. She's a yeah. heel. Yeah. Okay, that... I, I, I'd, I'd like to meet this writing crew for WWE and how they proceed to tell Vince McMahon their ideas. Craig, go ahead on, on these few matches here. All right. Um, we'll have to, I, I'm still sick in the head a little bit. Not like that, but <laughs> Ah, I'm here for you. Um, you'll, you'll have to give me the lineup again. Well, okay. I want you, I want to know your thoughts on on how Oscar lost, and and you know basically using Charlotte to um, give the title to Carmella with the cash in on SmackDown, and then Jinder. Remember we talked about him winning the U.S. title, easily forgettable. So I don't blame you. And then Cena and Undertaker's segment. Yeah, Jinder winning the U.S. title was the one I was forgetting because I was just trying to. Totally understandable. Yeah. yeah. But the U.S. title match, I 
I completely missed Bobby Roode's entrance, so I don't even know if it was uh, something special. It wasn't. Uh, okay, just the regular entrance. Yeah. Um, so the U.S. title match was, eh. I was hoping Rusev would win, and he didn't. He took the fall. And it's, it's just not looking good for him. Um, if he lasts past SummerSlam, I'll be amazed. Um, Cena Taker. I thought it was good for what it was. I wasn't looking forward to any like 20 minute match and for him just coming out doing his spots, choke slam tombstone. That's it. He's, he's 24 and two, which they didn't talk about, but that's fine. Um, it, I thought it was good for what it was. Oscar tapping to Charlotte. See, I, I agree with you guys that this should have been a longer match and that Carmella should have cashed in after both of them were completely exhausted, regardless of who won the match. Um, I think it was a wasted opportunity. I see how they could get away with it on SmackDown because of the Iconics. But the fact of the matter is, what do you do with Asuka now? I mean, she lost the streak, which was basically her gimmick for the last two years. What is she? Well, what did you guys think about after the match when Asuka got a microphone and made Charlotte or put Charlotte over even more? Uh, Asuka was pretty much like, she metaphorically just bowed to Charlotte. She said, Charlotte was ready for Asuka. Congratulations. I, that wasn't necessary, I don't think. For a second, because this happened before the Nakamura heel turn, I thought she told the crowd to shut it. She said, Charlotte. So I was like, heel turn, this, is, this could be good. And then the hug and the whole sportsmanship. I'm not a fan of fate. Face versus face works once a decade, in my opinion. Yeah. Greg? I have many opinions about the end of Charlotte and Asuka that don't actually involve the ending of the match. My problem is, and this was a problem throughout the night for me, the shots of Cena in the crowd and whatnot, it took away oh. from Charlotte's big win over Asuka because the focus was on Cena getting ready for Taker. Yep. It's like they could have like made that just a segment in and of itself, but they chose, it's like, okay, and Asuka gets two big moments ruined by other people. I mean, the Rumble when Ronda Rousey came out, and then this was Cena going to chase The Undertaker after she lost her first match ever. It's like, Asuka is an afterthought in, like, these big moments, and I don't know what that says for her. Yeah, definitely. Well, we did have, yeah, and the way, the way Mania was booked, I mean, when we had title changes, it seemed forgettable. Bludgeon Brothers became the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Nia became the Women's Champion for, for Raw. And Seth, as you mentioned earlier, Aaron, you liked that match. Seth became the IC champ. Um, we can, you guys can cover all those. I mean, WrestleMania was huge. We've all basically stated our our review on this the day after. But I, I really want to focus on the two main events, and especially since TJS is here, because when Nakamura and AJ was announced, he he said this match has got to go on last. I said I we know it's I know it's not going wow. to. It's not going to go on last with Roman Reigns on the card. And I think, looking back at WrestleMania, I don't, I mean, the crowd was dead even for that match, but do you think if they would have changed the lineup up a little bit, and, and maybe did Reigns and Lesnar earlier, and maybe in the AJ Nakamura spot, and then had AJ Nakamura last, that even if the fans were spent, do you think that would have went home better for the whole show? I'll start with you, TJS, and your thoughts on both of those title matches. Uh, well, um, I'm not really sure because, um, you know, I think that the crowd is more alive for Reigns and Lesnar than they were for AJ and Shinsuke. Not in a good way, but, you know, there was at least some re uh, reaction. It felt like in AJ versus Shinsuke, they were sitting on their hands. Yep. Um, now, let me point out something since I was there, and it's, it's played different on TV. There were some beach balls during the Reigns and Lesnar match. They were trying to do the wave, fail the tent. No, you know, it just had your certain group of smarks that were trying that. Of course, beach balls got taken away fairly quickly, but there were a lot of them. They try, you know, the, this awful chance, the CM Punk chance, nothing sustained for a super long time. If the crowd really hated this match, why did nothing sustain? And I was looking at a lot of people trying to be into that group. And you know what they were doing? They were trying to act like they didn't care, but they were still looking. They were still looking at the big, the suplexes and, and I didn't say nothing because I didn't want to get in a fight. But they were. They were looking. Go ahead. I just wanted to point that out. Oh, yeah. Oh, there. I, you saw us. Oh. I, you're good. Okay. Go. Okay. Uh, I thought AJ 
was fine. Um, I don't know. I thought AJ versus Shane from last year was better. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I felt like they held back definitely because you know how WWE is. They they want to get multiple matches out of these guys, so that's what they're going to do. I'm guessing. I'm sure that's your backlash, but you know, I thought the match was fine. I thought the New Japan match was better, obviously, uh, but I really did like the heel turn at the end because I wasn't expecting it. And uh, fast forward a little bit to SmackDown, Nakamura is doing great as a heel, I think. Yep. But um, and as far as the Universal Title match went, um, what do we do? I'm, what was it? Six F fives that it took to beat Roman. Uh, Five took, in the ring, one outside. Yes. And it, it took three to end a twenty year streak. It took one to beat Braun. It took one to beat Joe. Uh, and Joe and Braun have both beaten Reigns. So and I, I just don't understand the logic of it. And then I don't know. It felt like uh, I don't know. It was just weird. And then the blood. I'm not sure if he was if he was busted open hard way or not. Yeah. But I felt like they were just they were trying to get sympathy for Roman. You know, I don't know. It was fine. I I expected Roman to win though, of course. Uh, and I was pleasantly surprised that Brock won. Um, but now it looks like Brock is going to lose it. The greatest Rumble in Saudi Arabia. So, whatever. Um, I just wish AJ versus Shinsuke would have closed with that heel turn because it would have been a big moment. So, and that's kind of why I pointed that out, TJS, because, you know, I'm thinking the fans might have been more into Nakamura AJ if it was last. Because hmm. to me, they really, the fans, they thought they crapped on Le- Reigns and Lesnar. In my opinion, they crapped on AJ and Nakamura. Craig, thoughts on these two big main events? You know, I can't remember a more disappointing set of main events since WrestleMania 21. Yeah, because both of these matches were underwhelming. Um, actually, WrestleMania 25's world title matches were pretty terrible, also. Yeah, um, but this one, AJ Nakamura just never seemed like it got going, and then all of a sudden, Styles Clash and it's over. It's like, oh, um, cool. It's <laughs> like, I mean, I'm a fan of both of the guys, so AJ winning, you know, I didn't have a problem with. Um, but it seems like they book these big matches for WrestleMania and then they have their better matches at lower level pay-per-views. It's like, it's WrestleMania. You should put on the best show for your show of the year. Yep. Not just get everybody invested in the stories after. Greg, do you think it's because WrestleMania sells regardless of how the matches are? You know what I mean? So it's like, why give us that? Why give the best product for that? Uh, just people are there and they're happy. The entrances are there, the pyros. I, that, I mean, it's almost like that's what they do. Yeah, I mean, it seems that way. And there's one or two matches at WrestleMania that typically are more memorable than any others for good reasons. Um, but Reigns and Lesnar, it, I was just confused at the end. I was like, so now what happens? And I don't know how long Brock is signed for, Brock and Heyman are signed for. At this point, I really don't care. <laughs> as terrible as that is, I mean, yep. listeners' matches are suplex, 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 F5. Uh, you know, that's it. They haven't been anything special since the AJ match, and before that, the CM Punk match. So, I don't know. Aaron, I know you've talked about this, but you yeah. want to add anything before we move to Raw? Yeah, well, when I think of Lesnar versus Reigns from WrestleMania, it's just finishing spamming. That's what it was. They were just doing finisher, finisher, finisher. There was nothing to the match. I would have liked to have seen them actually brawl in the crowd or make it a no-disqualification match, have them go into the crowd and fight, maybe go into the stands, like brawl all over the stadium. Just do something out of the box. Just to have this fight going all over the place, have them flipping over tables and throwing chairs at each other just make it two like beasts going at it godzilla and king kong you know that kind of match just Uh total carnage and chaos instead it's just finisher spamming that's what it was um so it was very disappointing and apparently the finish was changed at the last minute that's the word that's out there right now that reigns was supposed to win and literally found out the day of the show and that's why on raw he came out and cut that promo about Vince not cluing him in, and apparently that was a worked shoot. Um, so yeah, the whole thing was just really bizarre. The whole storyline 
I felt was designed for Reigns to win, and that's why we all predicted Reigns to win, and then he doesn't win. And it looks like, I'm, I'm going to say he does win the title in Saudi Arabia. I would be really shocked, even more shocked, than Reigns not winning at WrestleMania if he doesn't win in Saudi Arabia because I think he's going to get a much better reaction there. And to me, that's the place to do it. That's the place to do the title change. Uh, Nakamura and AJ, yeah, like Greg said, this is WrestleMania. <coughs> they should have gone out there and had the best match possible. But, of course, it's more about the entrances and the pomp and circumstance. And, yeah, I felt like they held back and... I'm, I'm almost certain their next match will be better than their match at WrestleMania. So Charlotte had a, that whole beginning Ric Flair entrance she had. I forgot to mention this earlier. I got goosebumps. That was incredible. Hearing the whole playthrough for Rick's song when she did that stand up off the throne. She was the champion. Nakamura is a challenger. Why does AJ get a basic entrance? But whatever, you know, it's... It, and, and looking at the main event, everybody, I think they were so disappointed because they expected Reigns to win. They wanted to be right because they were in the know all this time and they were ready to boo him out of the building or just walk out. And they couldn't do it because Lesnar won. So very strange finish to WrestleMania. All right, let's go to Raw. So great chat with those. I mean, again, it was a fantastic weekend. NXT won the weekend. So Zayn and Owens lost their match at WrestleMania. Good to see Daniel Bryan back, and we'll obviously talk about him when we go to SmackDown here. Zayn and Owens showed up on Raw. Kurt Angle said maybe TNA is hiring or has some job openings. <laughs> Got to mention that. That was awesome. They had a match, and if, if there was a winner, the winner was on going to be signed to Raw. Since when does that move that Owens does off the top rope make both guys not respond to a 10 count? Let's go around the horn real quick on this because that bothered me. TGS, I'll start with you. It was a draw. Oh. What the heck? Well, uh, you know, whenever it's for WWE, they make moves, death moves, like apron power bombs and whatever. Um, I thought it was a great match, though. Um, I wasn't sure what I expected, uh, you know, but it, Owens and Zayn are always going to have a good match. It doesn't matter what stage it is. Um, but I'm curious to see where they go with this story. Um, I guess they're both going to end up on Raw, but... You know, I thought it was a, a fine match. I thought it was really good. Right. You know, I think it'd be cool. Like, I know they did the tapings already for NXT. But I think it'd be cool if they just showed up there and be like, hey, we used to, we were both champions here. You know, maybe you'll take us back just to see if they can get a job there. Um, but obviously, I think they're going to have a job, whether it's on Raw or SmackDown, or they split them up so that they're not uh, working on the same show. But the superstar shakeup, I think, will bring a little more clarity to that. But of course, you know, I thought I could book WrestleMania. I got three matches right, so what do I know? Exactly. Um, but but it should be an it should be an interesting week coming up. Um, the TNA line by Kurt Angle was fantastic. Yep. Aaron, uh, did that like how much buzz did that TNA line get on the No DQ forums page? Oh, it was it was insane. <laughs> Everyone was just buzzing about that. That was hilarious. That was one of my favorite moments of the entire weekend. Um, the match itself, yeah, it was good. But yeah, TJS made a great point. You know, when was the last time two guys in any match in recent memory knocked themselves out to the point where neither of them could answer the ten count, especially with a move they've done in other matches before? Uh, so that yep. was that was a little hard to to really accept as credible but it is what it is i thought it was all right um they keep the storyline going we'll see how it develops on next week's superstar shakeup and uh yeah raw was a great show bobby lashley came back we had all the big debuts we had um ember moon show up we had the authors of pain and it looks like no more paul ellering but um you know i'm sure they'll be okay at least for the short term long term i'm not so sure but we'll see um, so, yeah, it was a really fun Raw. I, I definitely enjoyed it. How was the atmosphere compared to WrestleMania, Virtue? It was it was good. I and, mean, again, being in a small arena, but the chance obviously got going. Elias stole the show. I mean, he his they were so into his gimmick there. I bet. And why? And why? I mean, they know this guy can pull in the crowd with, with the music bits. Why are they booking him to get beat up every time? And did that do any favors to Lashley? 
that that's not the way you want to bring Lashley in because sure he came up at that point in front of that crowd on that raw people loved Elias even though he was insulting them so bringing Lashley out squashing your guy that you're cheering for people are like oh Lashley you're back uh, but oh we want to hear more Elias so let's go around the horn um and you have any more thoughts on the all these debuts Aaron and of course the return of Jeff Hardy and his uh, interesting Under Armour, and uh, which again I get it with the whole thing they're doing with Finn Balor, and I want to know your thought, everybody's thoughts on that movement that they're doing with that character, and Joe returned as well. Uh, Aaron, any thoughts on the returns of those guys? Okay, well, yeah, you made a great point about Lashley coming back and beating up yeah. Elias. Maybe there was somebody else, but who? 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 Who, 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 who would they who, have? Who? who would they have? Lashley come out and beat up. I'm trying to think. I mean, Miz, but Kurt Miz Hawkins. already had other stuff going on. Who would you say? Kurt Hawkins. Kurt Hawkins. Yeah. 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 Or they could have just had Elias Powder and, and you know, Lashley didn't quite get to him because then you could be like, wow, something might happen with these guys. You could have an actual feud with Elias. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, li I like Kurt Hawkins. I think that that would have been a good choice. Maybe a better choice than Elias. Good one, Greg. I mean, it was electric in there for him. I mean, just, just it was deafening. Yeah, and like I said. His, his heat this year was like Roman, all pretty much like Roman's last year at the beginning of Raw, even though it was a sh sh you know shorter period. Well, not booing. They, not booing. No, uh, heat, heat. There's good heat and bad heat. Yeah. Elias, that the good heat, obviously. It was loud. Yeah, that guy could not get booed. He was trying. He could not get booed by those fans, no matter what he said. And like I said, so, it's not like it's not like he could insult the the town or whatever, because most of those fans are from other parts of the country. Not a lot of them are from New Orleans, uh, yep. so he wouldn't have been able to to get away with making fun of the sports team. That wouldn't have worked. Um, the other debuts and returns. I mean, Samoa Joe was awesome coming back. I love his promo. I thought he did excellent. He did not miss a beat he was right back into the thick of things i really enjoyed that and um yeah overall i thought everybody shined on raw including jeff hardy coming back it looks like at least for the time being he's going to be off on his own maybe he's going to get drafted to smackdown i thought maybe they would keep the brother nero thing going but it looks like maybe that's going to go in a different direction so I'm, I'm really curious to see what's next for jeff hardy if maybe he gets drafted to smackdown live greg Thoughts on these returns and debuts, and then, of course, Elias. You know, I know Aaron will agree on this. Lashley's new theme sucks. Yeah. Um, if, they, if they don't have the rights to his old one, which I think was a Jim Johnston thing, which is probably why they didn't do it, because, you know, CFOs. But they, they should have had him come back with his old theme. Um, him coming out against Elias, you know, whatever for me. I mean, he came back. That was a, It didn't matter who he was against. The fact is he came back. Um, Jeff Hardy coming back was cool. It was good to see him. That segment between him, uh, Matt, Bray, and uh, Finn and Seth was pretty entertaining. Um, and, and Virtue, I know you were trying to stir stuff up, and maybe you agree with Bauer's uh, whole like LGBT like pushing that thing. I don't think it's a gimmick change. I think it's just like, something to support the movement. I think he's still the same Finn Bauer. I don't think anything's changed as far as that goes. Um, who else came back? Well, Ember, Ember Moon had a Ember good and AOP. Um, no way, Jose. And, who? Uh, Adam Rose? <laughs> who? Carlito? No, no way, Jose. Yeah. Um, no way, Jose. Whatever. I, I'm thinking that's going to go the same way Adam Rose did. You bring out so many people, it's like, okay, this is fun for like a minute. and then, But maybe maybe I'm wrong, because he didn't do a whole lot in NXT, and sometimes the people that don't do a lot in NXT actually become bigger stars on the main roster. Elias, Alexa Bliss, to name two. So I thought it was a good episode of Raw, and I'm really looking forward to the superstar shakeup. All right, TJS, and here's my whole thoughts on the Finn Balor thing. This is what WWE does now. They they try to, you know, we, they've always pushed the um, the make a wish. Now it's the women's revolution, and let's face it, you know, there there is a movement of equality even with, you know, sexuality and that type of stuff. And and they're using Finn Balor as the tool. I'm sorry, that's what they're doing. And maybe it was Finn's idea. I'm cool with it. I'm just saying. I wonder how far they're going to go with it because, you know, again, why not bring more eyeballs? There might be people that don't like wrestling but support what Finn Balor and what's that thing he comes out to, the forever over type thing. I think that's cool gimmick, and I know why the over is capitalized 
because Vince McMahon doesn't think Finn's over. So, like, I'm cool. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on it. I think it's more than just merchandise. Go ahead, TJS. Uh, I agree with you. I think this is a bridge into something more. Um, there were the rumors that James Ellsworth was going to become a transgender character. Uh, I think <laughs> I think that we're going to see a gay character soon in WWE. Maybe not Finn, but I think that we're definitely going to see one soon. Because WWE is very politically correct. It's well, they had Darren Young, but like he flopped. I mean, remember they uh, even had right. him with Backlund to reboot him, and that didn't even do anything. Yeah, I don't know why yeah, they don't uh, do the Velveteen Dream. He's already uh, flamboyant enough. Yeah, and, 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 you know, and it's it, entertaining. I mean, it's, I think this stuff is entertaining. Yeah, and, and he doesn't yeah. even have to go like the creepy like Orlando Jordan TNA route. I mean, he can still be the Velveteen Dream, like you can announce that. You know, perhaps he's gay, and it's fine because he's an entertaining character, and he's fantastic in the ring. So it's like, okay, just run with that. That's fine. Yeah, Velveteen Dream reminds me a lot of Gold Dust, honestly. Um, but you know, it was a great episode of Raw. Um, I'm not really a fan of AOP ditching Paul Elro because there was a YouTube clip after Raw went off the air, and uh, they talked about how they're closing the book on L Ring, which I know that he doesn't want to do the travel or whatever. That's uh, what I heard, but you know, I don't know where these guys are going to go from there because they've never really cut a promo before. Who goes on the main roster without ever cutting a promo? It's it's weird. Um, no way, Jose stuff was forgettable. Uh, I've never really cared for the guy. The gimmick just doesn't interest me. But uh, I guess they did like uh, kill two birds with one stone. You know, had it debut, uh, had his character debut in New Orleans. You know, the big party city. So maybe that's why it was so over. And um, Ember Moon, uh, it bugs me with Ember Moon. Uh, I don't understand why she's not getting a rematch for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, I forgot that uh, rematch calls just don't exist anymore. Uh, but we'll get to that uh, later on. Yep. Jeff Hardy coming back uh, was in. Uh, he wore the, the rainbow stuff just like Finn. Uh, and I'm kind of happy that he's going to be on his own, it looks like. Um, but there was also a YouTube clip for this where Jeff said that Brother Nero was going to be uh, stagnant. It was going to be come and go. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I think he'll end up on SmackDown personally. But, uh, you know, what am I missing here? Oh, Joe. Joe coming back was just incredible. The guy's super, super over. And he kind of felt like a baby face in this promo because he said that Reigns lied to the fans, he lied to his family, and he just keeps failing and everything. And, you know, then he challenged uh, Reigns at Backlash. Maybe that's going to be for the Universal Championship. I don't know. But uh, overall, just a, a great, great episode of Raw. <clears throat> Greg. The one thing I want to say about Reigns' promo is it came off to me, and I'm sure this is not the way they wanted to do it, it came off to me like he was whining. Like, he was almost acting like a heel, being like, he had, like, built-in excuses for everything. It's like, okay, if you were really a man, you would say Lesnar beat the crap out of you, and, you know... You and he should be a heel. He should be, Why because... Why is he getting another man? He gets... I guarantee you, if Joe just shows up and starts talking with another wrestler in the ring, sure, people would have been happy to see him return. Roman makes the other guys more liked. That I mean, it, you know, Vince McMahon's Vince McMahon, though. Yeah, and what TJ was saying, um, yeah, why is Joe getting an automatic title rematch when he lost and he was never champion to begin with, yet the champions, like Randy Orton and the Usos, had to fight for their return matches? What's the deal with that? But yeah, it's Well, let's right. go to SmackDown. We're, we're, we're moving to SmackDown, and we'll talk about that. So I've, obviously we know Paige retired on Raw. Did they actually air that speech? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Guy, it looked it was weird the way they did it. I thought it was right after something, and they went to commercial. So okay. So Paige retired on Raw. So before we talk about that and, and her though, let's go to SmackDown. So Orton has to wrestle for his rematch. Yep. And the Usos have to wrestle for the rematch. Why do they only give rematches for the big two titles now, or in the women's title? Like, go ahead. Uh, TJS will start with you, then pass it on. What do you think on that? Uh Apparently, that's how it works now, um, or or this is just WWE uh, needing filler, which is what I suspect. Um, so I guess, I'm guessing that they're like, oh, New Day versus Usos, that was a big-time feud. Let's, uh, let's just throw it on the SmackDown after Mania. It'll be a big show then, and then 
Uh, was it Orton versus Rusev uh, versus Bobby Roode? Was that the match on SmackDown? Yeah. Triple. So did we just see that match uh, like the on the go home show for SmackDown? That's what it felt like. Um, Probably. I don't know. It's just it's ridiculous. Again, thunderous Rusev Rusev Day chance. The guy is just stupid <laughs> over. And of course, you know Randy Orton. I just thought it was pointless. Um, yeah, still. to have the. To have the match, yeah, it was filler. That's all it was because, uh, you know, it's a rematch clause. It's been that way for years. If you lose the championship, you get a rematch. Yeah. You know, even The Miz mentioned it on Raw. Yep. He wants his rematch at Backlash. So what's the excuse? They're both mid-car titles, the Intercontinental and United States. So I'm not understanding why Randy wasn't just like, hey, I want my rematch. I shouldn't have to be in this triple threat match. Yep. Same thing with the Usos. It, it doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> Whatever. They Whatever. need to hire a writer that all he does is is repeat, you know, or, or dish out logic back to what the other writers are writing. That's what I think. Craig? You know, it, people give Road Dog a lot of crap. It's like Road Dog freaking worked for how long? Um, but I mean, I, I won't blame Road Dog on this stuff because it still goes through Vince McMahon. So, like, why is it, you know, who, who's exactly not thinking of this logic? I won't throw Road Dog under the bus for any of that. If you've ever seen Road Dog's Twitter of how much he has to defend his decision, I, I almost feel bad for the guy. It's like, geez, it's like, don't give him all the heat. Some, most of those probably aren't his decisions. Right. I feel like he yep. didn't like the Russo heat for all these. Um, SmackDown, I don't know what to say about it. I felt like they gave away like a lot of stuff that they shouldn't like the money in the bank cash in, I think should have happened at mania. They gave away Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles on free TV, which Nakamura interfered. And of course that is what it is. SmackDown to me, I think a lot of people, by the time we got to SmackDown, especially after takeover the hall of fame, WrestleMania and the raw after mania were like, okay, just, we just got to get through this like together. I don't know why they just don't move it to, like, live on Thursdays. I don't know. Well, the problem with SmackDown, it was the last thing of the WrestleMania week, but and it was also, you know, the, the last thing before the shakeup. So it was really in a spot where, you know, well, what can we yeah. do here? I mean, come on, Iconic. That That's the, you know, the Iconics is what SmackDown gets after Raw gets all these new people and returns. Well, nothing, yeah. nothing against Iconics. I'm just saying, you know. Here's my problem with the Superstar Shake. I'm doing it so quickly after the Raw after Mania. Um, you know, the Raw and SmackDown are, are, have the call-ups from NXT, the returns, and all that big stuff. It, it, and they don't get used to their new roles before it's like, oh, you might switch brands. It's like, okay, so you're on this show this week. You might be on this show next week. We don't know. It's, it's like, give them a little time. That's why I liked when they did the drafts in like June or July time frame. Because it's not near WrestleMania. It's not when a bunch of people are coming on. It's yep. just... But but after WrestleMania, it's supposed to be the culmination WrestleMania is. So it's supposed to be a new year. So, you know, new year, new brands, you yeah. know. So maybe that's why they, they switch brands. Even though WrestleMania is not the culmination, it seems. Right. Um, whatever. I mean, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, great point, TGS. I mean, it feels like WrestleMania should be the end of feuds. And then after WrestleMania, you start new feuds. But sometimes at WrestleMania, it's the start of a feud. And then you get the better matches later on in the year. Like uh, Greg, I think, mentioned WrestleMania 21, which is a great comparison. And I was there at that one. That WrestleMania started off red hot. You had the first Money in the Bank. You had Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio. You had Undertaker, Randy Orton, which in my opinion is a very underrated Undertaker WrestleMania match. You had, of course, Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle. And then at the end, starting with Big Show and Aki Bono, and then the title matches, it kind of just fell off a cliff, in my opinion. Um, that's how this year's WrestleMania was. And um, as far as SmackDown goes, I, I thought it was a fine show for what it was. I think people were just burned out with wrestling for this week. As far as the shakeup, I get what TJS is saying. It's like the end of a season, and they're starting up a brand new season. I think that's why they do it. But at the same time, what Greg is saying, I think it's good when you have a little bit of a break so people can take a little bit of time to digest everything that they've just been given. And we really don't have that time. We have the Superstar Shake-Up. We have the Greatest Royal Rumble. We have Backlash all less than a one-month span together. So it's just a lot to really digest right now. And we've been talking here about all this stuff. And we still have more to talk about because we have the Superstar Shake-Up. We have the whole Rusev situation. So Virtue, what's next on our list here? 
Well, I mean, we didn't talk about Paige being GM. So that to me, that's all the they put all the eggs in that basket as the big surprise, uh, even more so than the Iconics. Um, because not only was she the new GM, now Daniel Bryan is officially a full-time wrestler. And so Paige's big announcement was to say, you know, she basically gave away AJ and Daniel Bryan. And so WWE must be thinking, this is what's going to make this SmackDown great. But why? Why in the hell did, and let's not lie, when Paige first said AJ Styles, or what did she say? Daniel Bryan verse or something like that. And they chanted yeah. Rusev Day. That didn't make TV. It got was edited. Old. It got edited off the YouTube video live. There were the Rusev Day <sighs> chants, and then she had to say the line again so the fans would get the hint that they're supposed to say AJ. And then once they you said AJ, she said AJ. But yeah, on the YouTube video, the Rusev Day chants were completely edited out. It, it, and you right. can see them chanting Rusev Day. Yes. It's Yes, yeah, so that's th this is the great segue. So obviously, I did want to talk about but we kind of already did with um, the cash and with Iconics beating up Charlotte and Carmella's cash and you know we kind of already talked about that. So now let's talk about Rusev Day. So Paige comes out. We you know they make the match. Um, she makes the match with Daniel Bryan and AJ. They gave it away for free. They didn't even really hype it throughout the show. What I think should have happened is Nakamura should have killed someone's entrance and the match never happened. That would have gave him all these people like, yes, we're going to get AJ and Daniel Bryan right now. And it never even happened, but no, they didn't do that. They had him come out late. They actually wrestled a little bit. So, so to me, that's fine. Now Daniel Bryan's is part of the regular TV roster. Uh, but with that said, Rusev day was announced that Rusev was going to face undertaker at the greatest Royal Rumble in Saudi Arabia. I mean, and when was that announced, Aaron? Like Sunday, Monday, early that was this announced, week? That was announced. Was it announced this morning or was it announced last night? I'm not sure. It was announced it was, in the last 48 hours. Tuesday. And so now, and then I see him tweet, bury me lightly, softly, or bury me softly or something like that. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, what's happening with Rusev Day now? I'm kind of interested. Uh, is there going to be a total squash or – and then all of a sudden today, Aaron, Greg, and Tyler, <laughs> my boy, Chris Jericho, got the match against Undertaker. Now I'm actually interested in this greatest Royal Rumble. Nothing against Rusev, and I know it's going to let a lot of Rusev Day fans down, but I'm not pissed off because it's Jericho. So everybody, what are your thoughts? And, and let me give you mine first. I don't know what the deal is if Rusev is asking for his release, if they got mad about him, if they had cold feet because of the Rusev Day chance, would that translate at Saudi Arabia? And they didn't want that to kind of disrespect The Undertaker. Jericho, they know in foreign land, draws heat. If he needs to be that heel, I mean, he punched a woman in, in Vancouver, pie-faced her. Um, you know, they bombarded him. The, the kick of the Brazilian flag. Jericho knows and JBL too. They know how to draw heel heat in foreign land. So I may, if that's why they did it, so it makes The Undertaker get cheered and Jericho does not pander to, to people that cheer for him, I get it. But why? What do you guys think happened? Aaron, I want to start with you. I'm actually going to talk about this on my Virtues Rage in more depth after, after we do this video because – it's a hot topic for me. Go ahead. Well, it's funny about Rusev because when the match was announced, everybody was complaining. They're like, oh, this is going to, this is the literal and figurative burial of Rusev. And now when Jericho's announced as his replacement, people are like, well, you know, Rusev's not getting this spot now. They're burying him by taking him out of this match and throwing him in the Rumble. So it's like, make up your mind, people. Are they burying him or not by having him in this match or not having him in this match? I mean, people. Oh, is he in the Rumble? I'm assuming he is. They need 50 bodies, so I would think he's going to be there. Uh, but but now, does anybody think that WWE's protecting Rusev Day by because they saw a quick backlash of getting buried, and they're like, shit, we better not have Rusev in this match against Taker because it might – he is selling merch. Yeah, this is the but, weirdest situation right now. Go ahead, TJS. But a match with Undertaker is a big deal, especially yeah. in today's age. So if he if they were going to have him work with Undertaker, then that's a big deal. So I think that people were looking at this the wrong way. They're saying, "Oh, they're going to bury Rusev." Literally, I don't think so. Um, I th I was actually looking forward to Rusev versus Undertaker. Maybe the casket match thing was a rib, but if that was so, then why is it still a casket match with Jericho? Uh, I think the plan is 
you know, I don't think they're going to bury Rusev. Um, I just think that they liked Rusev, and maybe they trusted him enough to work with Undertaker. You know, who knows? Um, but so I don't even know. Why do you um, think they pulled Rusev and then put Jericho in there, though? Just just off the top of your head, why do you think they did that? Well, the only thing that I could think of um, is uh, maybe that Rusev did ask for his release. Um, I, don't, I heard that he's not being advertised for Extreme Rules. So, and I mean, Meltzer talked about this and said um, that he doubts that Rusev asked for his release. And you see Rusev tweeting and everything. I think it's a work. I think Rusev's just trolling the fans. Um, I don't know, though. Um, right. if, I had to, if I had to guess, um, I guess that Jericho versus Undertaker would be a bigger match. And they didn't want to waste their Jericho appearance for the Rumble. Yeah, that's a, that's a very so, good point. And I just wanted to add to that. Um, regarding Rusev possibly asking for his release. Um, I mean, you look back at Ryback, he left the company, but they didn't just release him. He had to go home and sit out the rest of his contract for however long it was, six months or whatever. And I think the same thing would apply to Rusev. If he got released, he would have to wait out his contract. So he might as well just stick it out and just go along with whatever wwe wants him to do but you know people are saying we well you know what rusev is on tv every week and he's he's um selling merchandise he's making money but you know knowing these guys they want to be able to succeed as much as possible they're there because they're very driven people they all want to be the top guy if rusev has a glass ceiling i could see him being really frustrated and wanting to leave despite making money despite being on tv every week he still feels disrespected and feels like he has no upward mobility in WWE. So it's a really bizarre situation because he tweets all this stuff. We don't know what's a work, what's not. It's confusing. Is it drawing money? I mean, the, the question is, you know, if you're going to throw off fans and work them, is it leading to money being drawn? And I really don't know. I don't know if this is helping Rusev's, Rusev's case. I really don't know. I'm just confused as much as everybody else watching this right now. Uh, Greg, your thoughts on the whole Rusev situation. What do you think is going to happen with him? He's you know, praying that Rusev's still with <laughs> WWE. <laughs> the more I think about this, I don't think this is done to hurt Rusev by taking him out of the match for a couple points. Maybe they realize that in Saudi Arabia, the Rusev Day chance will be over and they don't want that like baby face like cheering to go to Rusev over the Undertaker. I agree. And at the same time, we all know Rusev would not win that match. There is no way that they would book Rusev over the Undertaker, right. quite frankly, in any match from now on. Especially so, a, ca a casket match. Especially a Taker specialty. So, so maybe they're doing this to protect Rusev so that he doesn't have to take another loss to the undertaker who's semi-retired um, even if it is a specialty match. So I don't have a problem with taking Rusev out of that and throwing him in the rumble. Um, I don't know if Jericho is still going to be in the rumble because he was originally announced, but since they switched him, I, I haven't checked who's all in it. Um, and why did they have I, triple H and Cena? Like, you know what I mean? After the whole WrestleMania thing, Cena posted that cryptic playing on the piano, that same song that Elias was first playing on his guitar when he came out. Why wouldn't they just make Cena an Undertaker since it's the biggest show? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just weird booking for this greatest Virtue. Royal Rumble match. That makes too much sense. This is WWE. You have to check Greg. your brain at the door. Thanks, Tyler. <laughs> Greg, what's your <laughs> thoughts with that? You know, Cena Triple H, I mean, that's a match we haven't seen in a long time. I mean, the last time I think I remember seeing them one-on-one, -on -one, and I'm sure this isn't right. I was going to say 2008, 2009, around that time frame when they were still on the same brand. But other than that, they haven't really faced each other one-on-one. -on -one. So that's probably what they wanted to do. They wanted to have a big match feel. And they know that Taker probably couldn't do a 20-minute match like we talked about with WrestleMania earlier. And we know that Triple H can. I mean, he was just in the match of the night at WrestleMania. So seeing that Triple H, those two in that spot, I don't have a problem with it. And of course, I mean, I, I, I'll say it right now. Yep. I'm, of course, excited about the 50-man Rumble because it's me. Yeah. So... I don't know who all they're going to have. I hope they don't announce all 50, but you know, you'll kind of probably get spoilers it's because it's not like you can sneak people into Saudi Arabia to be yeah. surprised. So uh, what do you I, think they're going to do for uh, entries? 60 seconds? I don't, I don't know. know. 
Yeah. I don't think they go any longer than 90 seconds. If you do two minutes, the Rumble match is going to be two hours, which, again, I wouldn't have a problem well, with, but I'm not everybody else. Well, they already I mean, I, don't do 90 second. They don't do two minutes as it is. I think they do 90 seconds at the longest, and sometimes I think somebody was doing a, a count of the time, and I think sometimes it was as short as 60 seconds. It really just depended on guys coming out and the timing and everything, but... Yeah, I think no more than 60 seconds with, with 50 guys. I think anything longer would make that match drag out way too long. Well, the thing is, I, if that's a big arena like they say it's going to be, like it's supposed to be 70, 80,000 people, you're going to have a long rampway. So you have to have at least 90 seconds for them to get there. Otherwise, you're entering, and then 10 seconds later, somebody else is entering, and it's, it's going to be complete chaos. So you have to have at least 90 seconds, in my opinion. They'll all be running down there, and they'll get blown up. So, all right, great discussion, but it is time for the main event. I do have more to say um, on the whole Jericho Taker casket match situation, but this is how I cheaply plug my Virtues Rage video. So everybody goes to nodq.com when I post it. You're going to have to see what I say, my details on that over there. You like how I did that, Aaron? Yes, very well done. Nice cheap plug. Main event That's time. Great. Can't give it all away here when I'm going to be talking about it on my own thing. All right, main event time. Superstar shakeup coming up on Monday and Tuesday on Raw and SmackDown. Um, there's a couple names, and I'm sure you got, you know, I'll let you guys talk first on this, that I'd like to see go to particular brands. And I'm pretty sure one of you guys will probably say the same thing. So, Tyler, I'm going to start with you. Uh, any big, bold, like, bold predictions, like who might go where, any obvious, like, to revitalize somebody's you know, character go. Okay. Um, I'm going to say that, um, this is probably the boldest pick. Uh, I think Braun Strowman is going to go to SmackDown. Um, I think the Usos are going to go to raw, uh, revival will go to SmackDown. Uh, I think Bailey or Sasha will go to SmackDown. Um, see, this is harder because I'm not sure how many people are going to move, uh, I think the mid card titles are going to stay where they are. Um, I hope uh, that Bobby Roode goes to Raw. I think that would help him. Uh, Baron Corbin, I think, should also go to Raw. Um, and maybe we'll get some announcers that are going to move. Um, personally, I'd be happy if uh, Booker T came back and took Coach's spot, but uh, I doubt that's going to happen. Um, Interesting. I see Aaron in a state of dis. That's like yeah. the uh, Undertaker losing the Lesnar reaction right there from Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of hard for me to call because uh, hopefully we get some more call ups uh, with this though. Um, I think Daniel Bryan, AJ, and Shinsuke will all stay on SmackDown. But um, like I said, I'm just hoping that we have some more call ups because SmackDown really got the short end of the stick here. Uh, what about you, Aaron? What do you think? Well, first of all, is Coach really that bad that you want Booker T to come back? I thought I think Booker T's interesting at least. Coachman is just so boring. I think they're all boring. Um, well, you know, oh, yeah. Booker T and Corey have created that you know rapport back and forth with each other. That that could be very entertaining, you know, bickering. But again, does that take away from the show? I think it all does right. take away from the show. But yeah. Um, I did mention this. I think Miz and Daniel Bryan will end up on the same brand. I don't know who's going where, but my feeling is SmackDown is going to get gutted, most likely, because it's what usually happens. Raw gets all the good picks. SmackDown might get one or two stars. Maybe Finn Balor will go to SmackDown, but I think you're going to see Raw get the bulk of the talents. Probably Daniel Bryan, maybe Bobby Roode, maybe the Usos like TJS mentioned. Uh, maybe maybe one of the top women stars. Um, maybe Oscar will go to SmackDown. I think I think Oscar and um, Finn Balor maybe will be the top two Raw people to go over to SmackDown. From SmackDown, I think Bobby Roode will be one of the main guys. And um, I don't I don't see AJ Styles moving, but that could be a huge shock if we're talking about surprises. That would definitely be a big surprise. But I think the biggest surprise would be Reigns going to SmackDown. As I would say, I think that's highly unlikely in all likelihood. What do you think, Greg? Um, I don't see Reigns moving no. at all. Um, there's been rumors that Seth Rollins would go to SmackDown. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, he's the Intercontinental Champion. But they swapped shows last year, uh, so I don't know. Uh, I'm going to pick Finn Balor to go to SmackDown. 
I say Asuka goes to SmackDown officially. Um, as much as I don't want them to separate Sasha and Bailey, the fact that they're having a match on Raw and not like some pay per view build up, I think is ridiculous. That they should have had side. a WrestleMania match. Um, so unfortunately, I think they're going to split them up. I'm going to say Sasha Banks goes to SmackDown. Um, and tag team, I think, since I think Finn Balor is going to SmackDown, I'm going to say the club goes with them. Interesting. Anderson and Gallagher. Interesting. And, and AJ would be over there too. So, I mean, you can have all four of them be yeah. the club. I mean, you could do Balor versus AJ Styles. You could do a big feud with those guys. What do you think about Brian possibly going to Raw? I don't see that happening. I, I, I mean, he might because they want like a big baby phase over on Raw because, you know, Roman is Roman. <laughs> but the, the thing is, if they put Brian and Roman on the same show, the fans are going to crap all over Roman just like they did th three years ago for Fastlane when they had their match. Good point. And they're going to want Daniel Bryan to be the champion. I mean, that's that's the way it's going to be. So I don't think Brian and Reigns end up on the same show. Interesting. Um, as far as going so to Raw, I'm going oh. to say... I don't want to say Orton moves to Raw. I don't, I don't care for that. Bobby Roode moving to Raw, I can see. I could see them moving somebody like Ty Dillinger to Raw because he's not doing anything on SmackDown. I would like to see Baron Corbin on Raw. I think they could actually do stuff with him. Um, so I don't have a whole lot of picks. I, I don't even know who I would pick for the women's. Uh, who would even make sense? Naomi to Raw? Maybe. Which, well, which would separate her from the Usos um, if they did that. But I, I don't know. They, they like to throw swerves at us, so... Uh, you, you can't really predict because you don't know who's going to win. You know what, Greg? I do like that idea, like Naomi and the Usos jump in the road. The Usos are one of the hottest acts on SmackDown, so it makes perfect sense if my theory is correct and SmackDown's getting gutted. I think you take the hottest act from SmackDown, which is the Usos, and move them over to Raw. I definitely see that as a possibility, and Naomi would go with them most likely. Um, so, yeah, I think that that's a very solid pick there. Um, what do you think, Virch? All right. So Zayn and Owens, I first, I just think they're going to end up on Raw. I yeah. don't know why, both of them. Um, so they're going to go over there. I think, so Roman's going to win the Universal title, stay on Raw, so they'll have their title. I think Brian's going to stay on SmackDown. Nakamura's going to stay on SmackDown. I think Nakamura will become the WWE champion. I think AJ Styles is going to be on Raw. Now, if he goes on Raw, he's still the champion. Nakamura will somehow still win that title, so it ends up on SmackDown. So I, I say AJ's going to Raw. I, that, I, I really feel that's going to happen. And then you're going to have um, Brian Nakamura remain on SmackDown, and I think that Miz will also go to SmackDown. There you go. Um, I, I just that that's what. So to me, SmackDown's going to have a pretty good. You know, Nakamura, Miz, Daniel Bryan, I think they'll end up being okay. Um, Raw is going to get their big name, and I, I could see Charlotte go to Raw as well. And like you said, Greg, Asuka officially goes over to SmackDown now that Carmella's champ. Again, it's crazy. I mean, we know it's not, I would say, what, three or four big names are going to jostle back and forth, but, you know, it, it, it's just weird, and it's hard to exactly predict, but... That, that's my thought. I mean, any, anybody I, – I think AJ is going to be the big one. Like, whoa, that's just my Makes opinion. Makes sense with that whole theory about gunning SmackDown. That would definitely be a, a big pick. Absolutely. So so you guys think that Braun Strowman is going to stay on Raw? Yeah. Vince, does, that's Vince's show, and that's one of Vince's big guys. I, I, I agree on that. I think Nia's staying, I Nia's staying on Raw, too, in my opinion. I, I just don't see what's left for Strowman to do on Raw. He needs some fresh matchups, I think. Um, I don't know. I guess the shakeup would fix that and bring some guys over on AJ Raw. AJ Styles and Braun Strowman. I think that would be a good match. Sam, <laughs> That's Sammy, a mismatch. But. Sammy and KO versus Strowman, I, you know, because they're sidekicks with each other. I don't know. Uh, who do you put Strowman against, really? He had matches with Brock Lesnar. He's had matches with Roman Reigns. He's had matches. Has he had a match with Samoa Joe? Like a, well, sure. Lashley. Exactly. Yeah, we Ashley. forgot about Lashley. So yeah, I all think, the big guys are staying on Raw. I think. I think yeah, I think, I think I think I think Strowman will stay on Raw. Wonder if the general managers will, general managers will switch or anything because it looks like Kurt Angle was not like getting any punishment or anything for what he did at WrestleMania. You know, I guess it was a match and everything, but 
Yeah. Still, you know, the evil authorities should have him guilty by association or whatever. Uh, that would make I don't, no I don't sense, know. though, with Paige just moving over from Raw to SmackDown and then moving back. That would be really Coachman weird. and Saxton it's would be, WWE. if they did anything, they're Coachman and Saxton and nobody cares. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> Hashtag bring back Booker. How That's about how about draft Michael Cole to SmackDown and have Moro Ronaldo be drafted to Raw? How about that? That's a good dream, Aaron. I, I dream of that, but not going to happen. Michael what? Cole's the voice. The comments oh should my. light up for this one, though, especially with the shakeup coming up. People are going to be putting all their different opinions in there, so that'll be cool. That'll be cool for me to go in there, and then everybody knows my buddy Cody Kalinska will go in there, and if you have any, if you, if you say anything against me in any way, he will slay you down. And he is he's an really a nice person. Guy. He, he's really a nice guy, though. I think he's he, he likes you, Greg. He puts you over. He's, he's like, I like the PA sensation. So, Well, who doesn't? Yeah. That's all I got. Anybody else got anything else or we'll bring it home? I, I, I just want to say this real quick as far as the yeah. commentators go. You know, Tom Phillips is underrated. I actually enjoy Tom Phillips. What? <laughs> it's just me. He's not my favorite. I still like Ronaldo as my favorite. But the Tom Phillips and Corey Graves dynamic works for me. Because they were commentators in NXT together. They had this back and forth that I really enjoyed. So Tom Phillips and Corey Graves being on the same team, I like. I'm also a Corey Graves fan because, you know, he trained me. But, you know, that's another story for another time. I, I don't know. It's just good for me. He doesn't sound into it at all. He just sounds like a robot. I just... And I think Graves is super overrated myself. I, I just... I don't Who know. do you like better? Him or Cole? Graves or Cole? Who do I like more? Uh, no, Graves. No, 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 no. Cole oh. or Phillips? Um, I'm going to go with Cole because the UK tournament. Cole was great in the UK tournament. I mean, I don't know. All the micromanagement that's going on. It's in his ear all the time. and He does a good job of executing it, but he's not... I, we need a different play-by-play -play commentator Michael Cole. I think he'd work better as a color. That's it. <clears throat> I got you. Well, I, I don't know if it's just me, but your connection's getting a little choppy. Do so you want to go ahead and get your plugs out there, TJS? Uh, you, you can follow me on Instagram at Tyler Joseph Smith, on Twitter at Mr. Tyler J. Smith, uh, my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tyler Smith. Uh, so I'm not sure if Aaron's making the still uh, doing the beanies or not, but um, you can hit him up at nodqmisc at gmail.com if you want one of those. Same thing goes with that lovely beach ball in the background, uh, prowrestlingtees.com. Get your nodq shirts. Aaron's wearing the nodq video shirt. Virtue has the Virtue's Raid shirt. You can get your Interstate Kyle shirt. You know, all the personalities. They got them all. But um, that's uh, that'll do it for me, guys. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, it was an You're honor welcome. to have you on. You need to change your, your handle to TGS No DQ or No DQ TGS. People, let us know which one is better. I think you should change your handles on all social media, No DQ TJS. Okay. I like it. Good idea. I'll go that, with it. That way everybody can remember it real easily. We would love to have you back on for more videos. You were great. Um, and thank you for, for shilling all the merch. It's much appreciated. Yes, the beanies are coming back, so stay tuned for that. Uh, the beanies should be ready in the next couple of days. I got more beach balls available and uh got some other stuff coming up we have uh, belts courtesy of bad billy j that's etsy.com slash shop slash bad billy j he made that fabulous one dollar oh shit i just said one dollar i just totally screwed one dollar what kind of cheap crap are you giving me rift thousand dollar yeah Thank i you. just i just totally ruined it i just totally killed the he always lowballs num numbers like a hundred dollars super chat donation to ban virtue yeah. Oh, he, oh. That should have been a thou. That should have been thousand, five thousand. Well, I learned my lesson, Virtue. Just so you know. <laughs> Any plugs, Aaron? I mean, all the no DQ stuff. Everybody knows. Oh, geez, what have I not talked about yet that I haven't already? Well, like I was trying to say, there's uh, belts coming up from Bad Billy J, which will be available soon. I'm thinking about doing maybe um, a special offer where people could get all three items: the beanie, the beach ball, and the belt for a certain price or whatever. Uh, so stay tuned for all that, and uh, that's all I got. Greg? Right. You can see me on this coming soon. I, I have I have a championship to defend, and, and Riff's got some good challengers lined up for me and hopefully some good questions. Um, follow me on Twitter, at PA Sensation. I'm still selling DVDs. I actually just got rid of uh, – 
couple of them today uh, to fellow wrestling fans. So we will, I'll still be selling them. Just hit me up on Twitter. You need to pay shipping. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not factory, but <laughs> it, it, they're five bucks a piece for the DVDs. You can buy them all for 125 and there's like 40 DVDs left in that collection. So it's a, it's a good deal for the price. And I'll sign every one of them if you want. If you, so, if you buy the entire lot for 125 bucks, I will sign all of them. <laughs> all right, good deal. And everybody knows I'm on Twitter at no DQ underscore virtue. Virtue's rage videos, which I'm going to be doing one about the whole Jericho being put into the casket match one, you know, at the greatest Royal Rumble. That's coming up soon. Uh, go ahead and follow me on Twitter, and you're going to want to. I'm over a thousand followers, and this weekend I'm going to pick a random person to win one of these at my expense. Uh, I do things on other websites, but my heart and soul is at No DQ with the review, the panel, and Virtues Rage, so everybody knows where to catch me. See the No DQ Galaxy later.